Headline at Politico today, Trump decision soon on governor's run. Headline at Drudge Report, Trump nears decision on run for governor. Please, folks. Folks, there's an old axiom in media training and public relations that says, whatever you do, don't lie to the media. And in general, I think it's a good rule. In general, that's a good ethical, moral way of doing things. However, I can't ethically tell you that you're going to get in trouble if you lie to the media. Case in point, Donald Trump. Donald Trump shows that you can fool at least some of the people, reporters, all of the time. Now, I just dare you, do a Google search with Donald Trump's name in it and may run for office, possible candidate. What you will find is this is a little trick he's been playing, not in the last two years, not in the last five years, not in the last 10 years, not in the last 20 years, but he's been doing it since 1988. As far as I could tell, who knows, maybe he did it earlier in his life. 1988, he said he may run for president of the United States. He's been threatening this time and time again, and it's obvious he has no interest in governing or even being a candidate. He certainly has no interest in public disclosure forms regarding his finances, and yet he realizes that at some level, reporters love to be lied to because they just can't resist a whiff of controversy and sensationalism, and Donald Trump brings that with him wherever he goes. So. You heard it here, folks. Donald Trump is not going to run for... Go okay, maybe he'll technically throw his name in the ring for a week and then quit and claim that he won a moral victory or something. But he's not going to run a serious campaign for governor, for senator, for president, for vice president, or anything else. It's all nonsense put on by the Trump nonsense machine. Interesting sound bite coming out of my home state of North Carolina. <laughs> this comes from a prominent state senator there, a Republican who says that Obama is worse than terrorists, Stalin, and Hitler combined. Here's what Senator Bob Rucho said. Justice Roberts Penn and Obamacare has done more damage to the USA than the sorts of the Nazis Soviets and terrorists combined. This is the sort of just wildly outlandish extremist rhetoric that uh, is a part of me that hopes the Republicans continue to do because it further isolates them, makes them seem like zealots, like idiots, like just frothing, deranged, crazy people. And this is coming from a very, very prominent state senator who's, who's been in office, been reelected seven times. It pains me to admit this, but this is one of the great ironies of life, I guess, is that conservatives who are so vicious and mean-spirited in public life, <laughs> I hate to say it, are frankly some of the nicest guys in private life. This gentleman, Senator Russo, was a friend, good friend of my father's, and I grew up spending time with this guy. I have many fond memories spending time selling Christmas trees for charity with the Optimist Men's Club in Charlotte, North Carolina, with this senator. Now, this was before he was in the Senate. This was you know, late 70s to mid 80s. And he was a peach of a guy. And now it's just, it saddens me and disgusts me to see him um, going down in the history books at some level, because this is probably the most media coverage he's ever gotten for anything, is saying Obama is worse than Stalin and Hitler. It's it's utterly despicable and shameful, Senator Ruscio. In other news, headline at Politico, Ambassador Kennedy, a star is born. I'm talking about Ambassador Carolyn Kennedy over in Japan. A fairly fawning article. I don't put much in this. When Senator Kennedy, excuse me, when wannabe Senator Kennedy started touring around the state of New York four years ago, she was 
frankly, awful. And I don't say this as some sort of partisan, conservative, anti-Kennedy. I'm a big fan of the Kennedy tradition. But she was amazingly inarticulate. She was someone who couldn't get through a sentence without 27,000 you knows coming out of her mouth. I well remember I was called upon to analyze this speech defect she had in numerous New York media outlets. And she's really not a very confident, inspiring public person. Now, I'm sure she'll do a fine job as ambassador to Japan. I'm not aware of that many horrible tensions between the United States and Japan. Now, and the Japanese certainly love someone who comes from a well-respected family in any lineage to a president makes that person golden. So I'm sure she'll serve admirably in that position. I'm just not sure how important that position is. I don't see it as a springboard for higher office for Carolyn Kennedy. Nothing, nothing wrong with her. She's devoted her life to charity, being a mom, that sort of thing, and more of a private life. That's fine too. <laughs> this is interesting. Poll from Rasmussen says that of the top three most influential people in the world, one is the Pope. Okay. One is President Obama. That's a no-brainer. But the third on this poll was Ted Cruz. Cruz was second among Republicans, apparently. Ted Cruz, now, he does have some influence. He was able to shut the federal government down. But does he have influence in the sense of convincing people to do something they don't want to do? To building bridges, to building coalitions? That remains to be seen. I, for one, am extraordinarily doubtful. There's an issue that's been getting more and more attention in the last month or so. Certainly Bill Maher has been putting attention on this for years. And here's a story in Politico over the weekend. It's called Atheism in Politics, The Last Taboo. Folks, we live in a society where it's considered bigoted, disgusting now to just make anti-gay slurs, to say you would never vote for a gay, to say you'd never vote for a Catholic, to be anti-Semitic or to be out and out racist and say, I hate black people. Those are all forbidden now. And that's great. I'm all in favor of those being sort of off the table. But there is one last form of bigotry that's considered wildly acceptable. You know, Pat Robertson would never say, I hate all gay people, but he's perfectly happy saying that an atheist, by definition, should never hold public office in America. And it is sort of the last taboo in politics. The number of avowed atheists who are in public office in America, and I'm talking about from president on down to dog catcher, you probably wouldn't need more than one hand to count up the number of people who are publicly atheists. Now, I have no doubt that there are, I don't know, 20, 30 percent of elected officials who are atheists. They just figured, hey, I'll never get elected. I'll just show up to church Sunday morning and take a nap. By all accounts, that's the position that Newt Gingrich has taken, and his biographers have concluded about him. Now, some biographers conclude that, that President Obama's an atheist. I don't know that. I'll take him at his word. Uh, but I do think that this is the next frontier, and we are not that far away. I mean, 15 years ago, if you had said, we're going to see gay marriage everywhere, politicians in both parties in favor of gay rights, gay people elected to office, that would have seemed a little crazy. I think we're in a similar situation with respect to the rights of people who believe religion is complete, utter baloney. Interesting tidbits coming out of Russia. Now growing up, I'm 50 years old, so growing up during the Cold War, you always think of these Russians as these, you know, far left Marxist Leninist who so far to left against traditional values. So it's still a bit jarring and shocking 
when you see things like what happened over the weekend. They're a leading Russian actor, one of the one of the most famous actors of all Russia, says this about gays. I'd burn them all in ovens. Apparently, this idea of hating gays and bashing gays is still wildly popular in Russia. Certainly, Vladimir Putin is essentially pushing that philosophy, sometimes into public policy. It's almost like the, the bad guys of Russia decided they could mirror the absolute worst influences of American politics, the right-wing religious extremist. So, a lot of expectations are growing for New York City's new mayor, or mayor-elect, he'll be sworn in in the next couple of days here, Bill de Blasio. He's made some sweeping predictions that liberalism will sweep the country. As a liberal, I do hope that that's true. I remain skeptical about how much can be done in the vein of income equality and income redistribution by cities. Because here's the truth about really rich people. Really rich people don't live in one city. They may have a $20 million apartment in Manhattan. That may be their primary residence, but they also have a $30 million penthouse in London. And they've got some sort of vast farm estate plantation in Montana somewhere. I mean, increasingly these days, the wealthy have six, seven homes. They travel extensively all over the world on vacation. And they're going to things like Davos and conferences to network with other rich people all the time. What that means is the number of nights they spend in any one city may be fewer than 100. Why is that significant? Because if you live all over the place, at some point you can just say, oh, I consider myself a citizen of Boca Raton. Now, when you're a citizen of Boca Raton, guess what? You're not paying any state income tax, and, what, and you're not paying a local income tax, and you're paying a property tax that isn't that extensive. So the people in New York who were counting on your income, they're not getting it anymore. So that's, that's my one concern with Bill de Blasio and others. You can say, let's tax the rich, but it, these days with transportation and communication and rich people owning seven homes, they're going to be pretty hard to track down and hold accountable to any one city. I think it has to be done at a national level. At some point, it's going to, be, have, to, be do, it's going to have to be done at a world level, taxing the wealthy, because it's going to be too easy for them just to avoid taxes altogether. I'm TJ Walker. Thanks for joining me. Please post your comments, and please suggest other topics for us to analyze right here. By the way, I'm considering doing these commentaries as a Google Hangout if not every day, at least once a week or so, because that would allow you to communicate in real time with me and we could have more of a conversation. Let me know if that interests you.